And now I am very happy to bring up Alika Ngoma to talk about the assassination of Moise and the significance of the African Revolution of Haiti. Uhuru Alikia. Uhuru, Uhuru, thank you, Director Akile, for um, that introduction. My name is Alikia Ngoma, and I'm a member of the African People's Socialist Party. I am the Administrative Assistant for Chairman Omali Ishitala, who I want to salute and thank for allowing me to be on this program today. Um, also, being in the party, the chairman has assigned me to be the Haiti expert of the African People's Socialist Party, as well as the Haiti editor of the Burning Spear newspaper, which is the official organ of the African People's Socialist Party, where I provide revolutionary analysis on the history and present day struggle and resistance of our people in IET. Um, as Akile introduced this webinar on Wednesday, July 7th, 2021, at approximately 1 a.m., Haiti President Jovenel Moise was assassinated at his residency, and his wife, Martine Moise, was left in critical condition. The news came as a shock to the world, especially to the people of IET, even those who had been demanding that he step down from office, as well as those of us who recognized him as a puppet of the white power imperialists and ruling class. Um, you know, even we were caught off guard um, by this news. There immediately began to be a lot of questions raised about this assassination. Who did it and why? Uh, who would have access to his house? Where was security? Was security in on it? How did anybody find out? Who took Martine to the hospital? You know, and perhaps the biggest question of them all was given that in October of 2019, Jovenel began to rule by decree, and on January 13, 2020, Jovenel Moise announced his dissolvement of the Parliament of Haiti, also given that Jovenel previously uh, fired the Prime Minister, and two days before his assassination, he uh, appointed a new Prime Minister who had not officially taken office, who now runs the country. Um, there were also questions raised about the day itself. How will the people react? What about the gangs? Um, what is Port-au-Prince in particular like right now? And what's next for Haiti? Um, and then after that, you know, we started to receive a bunch of inconsistent, you know, so-called details about the assassination. Um, you know, at one point, as, as Julie kind of touched on, at one point it was a mission carried out by about 29 Colombian mercenaries, perhaps even mercenaries that Jovenel brought into the country himself. Um, and over the next few days, just different um, lies were being said, uh, lies about that there was chaos in the country when that had not been true. Uh, the country was pretty much still and quiet, even the, the streets of Port-au-Prince, which normally is full of a lot of resistance and protests that we have seen over the past uh, few years. Um, as well as lies about the need for the United States and the United Nations peacekeepers uh, to come into the country to keep stability. So um, on the question on briefly, who was Jovenel Moïse? Uh, former Haiti President Jovenel Moïse was the presidential candidate of the Parti Haïtien Tête Calé, PHTK, which means Haitian bald headed party, whose campaign included uh, promoting him as the banana man who was going to do good for Haiti by reigniting our economy via agriculture and other production that previously sustained us as well as promises of things that the people of IIT should already have, such as decent roads and 24 hour electricity. Um, despite his campaign and, and their promotion of him as like the saint that was gonna save everybody, he only received 32.8 percent of the popular vote in the preliminary rounds of the election against another candidate who only received 25 percent. And despite neither of the candidates receiving at least 50 percent of the vote, which is required to move on, Jovenel was able to move on to the second round of the election. Uh, and that presidential election only resulted in a registered voter turnout of 21 percent. And one thing that the chairman you know, has talked about is Africans just really seeing that, you know, the electoral process, you know, is not um, 
although you know we can intervene in it and make it a tool a tool of the African revolution historically speaking the electoral process has not been a friend of African people so with the voter registration of 21 percent you know that's a statement to how Africans in Haiti saw that election anyway so in the actual election he received six percent of the vote and was declared six percent of the vote and was declared president based on his 32 percent um, in the first round his presidency was protested against by the people of IAT from the very beginning without going into much uh, redundant detail, some of which can be found in my articles for the Burning Spirit newspaper. Long story short is that Jovenel Moise was a neo-colonial leader and a representative of white power in blackface, which is one of the ways that the African People's Socialist Party um, defines neo-colonialism in a simpler kind of way. He was not a martyr, uh, nor did he die for the country as some petty bourgeois forces in and out of Haiti are beginning to characterize him. Um, there has been much speculation as to why Jovenel would be assassinated, including alleged internal pro, uh, problems within the PHTK. You know, it has been generally assumed by most people that the United States was involved in the assassination, and it could be for a number of reasons, including that, you know, sometimes. Um, the, the imperialists use you, and then once you're not useful anymore, they just do what they have to do with you. So, um, you know, today there has been a mixed response, at least after the first day, about how we should feel about the assassination of Jovenel Moise, and that um, as people from Haiti or as Haitians, that we should still be mourning because he was, quote, still our president. You know, this is um, this, he was somebody's husband, he was somebody's father, three kids now have no father. So, you know, we should be humane and um, feel sorry for, for his assassination, especially the way he died, you know, because they really brutalized him. But we understand that in the struggle against oppression, there is no sympathy for any oppressive forces. You know, um, if you're using that logic, you can also say that on the plantation, colonial enslavers were also people's husbands, you know, and they were also people's fathers as well. But the way they function in our communities, in our um, countries and stuff like that, they, so, so many um, husbands and fathers, if you want to use that characterization, uh, are victims to their regime, you know? So we, as um, enslaved people or as oppressed people, as colonized people, it's not in our interest to feel any kind of sympathy when a colonizer or a neo-colonizer or any kind of puppet dies because they are here to keep us in oppression. They are here to keep us colonized. They are here to keep us um, oppressed. They are the extension of white power in our communities, in our countries. And you know, if you are gonna be feeling sorry for, because this one died and this one died, then you might as well just give up the struggle for um, against against oppression, as well as the struggle for revolution, you know. Um, so there's questions about, you know, uh, he should have just been arrested, and uh, they even those who wanted to see him out of power would have just would have just preferred if he was not arrested but taken to court and tried, and you know, um, all the money that he has stole and all the all the lies that he has told the people that he be tried the just way, the principled way, um, which we know that that is still a statement of putting your faith in this system. You know, you're talking about in Haiti where, or in anybody, in anywhere, but I'm talking about Haiti specifically, where you have hundreds of thousands of African people who are in prisons who have never seen a judge at all because they've sold somebody's chickens or goats or cows, they, 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 they're, you know, they stole a cow, a chicken, or goat, and they're locked up for life. They have not seen any kind of trial whatsoever. This is the same kind of uh, judicial, judicial system. You are expecting to, to give uh, Jovenel Moise or any of these neocolonial puppets a fair trial and a trial that's right by the people. You know, it's insane to, to put your faith in any aspect of the system. 
And then in addition to that, um, as you can see in the other articles, Jovenel was making a move to, to rewrite the constitution anyway. And one of the things that he was proposing to write is that a, a president cannot be tried for something that he did while he was in office. So if that was gonna be the solution, uh, we just would have never seen any kind of result. So there is no question of him being brought to justice. There also is no question of justice for Jovenel right now as he is murdered. You know, I have seen some organizations who were on the ground, um, not revolutionary organizations. I don't even think that, that they call themselves revolutionary organizations, but I have seen them enough on the ground during different struggles of the past few years in Haiti, even them writing statements, sympathizing um, with Jovenel and his family. And it's just very confusing. And, you know, one thing that I always end every single article that I write for the Burning Spear with is cut heads, burn houses. This is the slogan that Jean-Jacques Dessalines introduced to the revolution um, uh, that was being waged between 1791 and 1803. Coup d'etat bulekai, cut heads, burn houses. All of them have to go. You know, all, all of the oppressors and anybody who sides with them has to go. We don't have time to be um, picking and choosing who we're gonna feel sorry for, especially when they have shown us time and time again that they side with the oppressor. Jovenel Moise is someone when, um, when Evelyn Sincere, who I also wrote about, was kidnapped, raped, and murdered as a result of the gangs that Jovenel has sponsored himself that terrorized the country, that um, have been reignited to, to shut down the resistance of the people that has been going on. Jovenel tweeted, uh, the police have only one job, which is to keep the bandits, that's the word that they use, to keep the bandits out of harm's way. And this is the person that people are trying to champion as someone that we need to feel sorry for or anything like that. So um, we say there won't be any of those kind of uh, emotions over here. Um, SG Louisi kind of bring, uh, talked about how white media covers Haiti. You know, I know that ever since I was young, any article I have ever read about Haiti, any news report, any video, anything on radio that I have ever read about Haiti begins with Haiti, the poorest country in the Western Hemisphere, or Haiti, the poorest country in the Americas. And even as I have been trying to follow the different stories uh, for you know preparing for this presentation and just in general, I've come across that sentence every single time. It drives me crazy. And you know, uh, as, as Julie said, white media, they, they never tell you, okay, if Haiti is the poorest country in the Americas, if Haiti is the poorest country in the Western hemisphere, what makes it that way? You know, how, how did, did Haiti just, was it rich? And then one day out of nowhere, it just became super poor without anything happening? No, they don't tell you that, you know, Haiti has been robbed and looted from ever since after the revolution. Haiti has been made to pay literally for having the revolution. You know, um, the, the white world united against Haiti and, and forced Haiti to pay France reparations for the loss of property that they lost during the revolution. And the property that they were referring to was African people ourselves because in colonial slavery, African people were seen as property. We were the commodity, you know, and as the chairman always says, we were the capital of capitalism. And so Haiti has paid over $90 billion in today's gold prices if you had to uh, convert it to France. You know, they also don't talk about the, U, the United States that, had, that came into Haiti and stole every piece of gold that was in the Haitian treasury and brought it to New York City. So when you're talking about Haiti being the poorest country, you know, in the Americas or in uh, the Western hemisphere, that is just a part of the propaganda. That is just a part of how they, they want you to understand Haiti and, and Haitians and even us, you know, who are from Haiti. When we read this, that is information of how they want us to understand ourselves. And as I just mentioned, um, the, the Haitian revolution, which was the first workers revolution in the world before there was the Viet Vietnamese revolution, before there was the workers revolution, before there was, I mean, sorry, 
the Russian Revolution, before there was Cuba, you know, there was Haiti, there was IET, there were African people. African people made the first workers' revolution in the world in IET. Um, this was a 12 year process of relentless struggle, extremely organized struggle, you know, revolutionary struggle. And um, at the end, IET defended, uh, defeated, I'm sorry, three European superpowers, which included the, the British, the Spanish, and finally the French. And so, um, and not only that, after the revolution, Jean-Jacques Dessalines said that any African, anywhere in the world, if you make it to Haiti, you will be free. That is what he said. He understood the question of the African nation. You know, he also sent Africans from IIT itself into other parts of the world, into the US, into other islands, um, into other places in the Caribbean and what they call Latin America and South America, you know, to, to wage struggles, to teach people, to train people, and just to, to bring an organized process to the, to the revolutions that they were trying to make there. This is IET. This is the real IET that the media does not want to talk about because when you talk about IET that way, it informs black people um, of not only what we really are, what we're capable of, but what we need to do today and what our solutions is. As, um, as Giluese just said, you know, our struggles are tied. And as you're gonna hear the chairman say too, whether we are, um, you know, in IET, in the US, in Azania, uh, or, or as people know it as South Africa, in the Congo, wherever we are, our struggle is one international African struggle. And that is what we have to be forging today. We have to, make, uh, to be making this revolution. And so I know for me, you know, before I came to the party, before I came to the African People's Socialist Party, I never used this word, but after being in the party, I can recognize it that I was a Haitian nationalist. <laughs> you know, I was, I was very serious. I was very serious about, about Haiti and, and just, you know, what, what, I, what I knew, you know, coming from family from Haiti, speaking Creole, all these things. So I was very passionate about that. And I was glad that I was um, eventually introduced to the theory of African internationalism that taught me that if I wanna see victory for Haiti, you know, I have to see victory for all of Africa, you know, and that Haiti's victory is not going to be separate from any other place in the world. And that, you know, as significant and as great and wonderful as what IET did the first time um, in 1804, we're not gonna be able to do it again by ourselves this time. We have to tie our struggle. And then of course, I'm telling you other African people too, that you have to stand uh, it's hard to say in solidarity because we're African people anyway, but in unity with the Africans of IET. We have to shut down all kinds of, you know, U.S. intervention, shut down all of the, the, the slander and, um, you know, just the disrespect, even the, the, the way Africans from IET ourselves are treated. All of that has to be rejected. We have to recognize that as you know, white power. And um, if we're going to say we're, we're, we're standing up for black power, then we have to stand up for Africans in IET too. So I'm making a call for um, African people everywhere to join the African People Socialist Party, adopt the theory of African internationalism as your own. Um, and again, kupetet bulekai uhuru. Thank you so much uh, for this really incredible, informative presentation um, that you just delivered. 